They're calling us trailer trash, undesirable. Leave us alone. We're not bothering anybody. We're paying our rent. Nobody's here as a criminal. One in 20 Americans live in mobile homes or trailers. Many of them could face eviction at any moment. We already knew that we couldn't afford to go rent or live anywhere else. Why should we have to go rent when we own our home? Investors all across the country are buying up mobile home parks. And these new owners can choose to drastically increase rent or repurpose the land without warning. You're talking about families and you're talking about elderly that are on fixed incomes. Mobile home parks are the most affordable housing that there is right now. I hope you can help me to get more time to find a home for my five brothers and my mother. As one investor put it, affordable housing gets hotter when the nation gets poorer. My mom didn't have to rely on the government for housing. If they move her to a place where she has to pay $1,300 rent for a two bedroom, for the rest of her life, she needs government assistance where she didn't before. For low-income residents, there is often nowhere else to go. What am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go? And the guy puts a hot water heater and he said, you gonna take that with you? So what street corner am I gonna put it on? When Alondra Ruiz Vasquez and her husband bought a home in Periwinkle Mobile Home Park in Central Phoenix, they had no idea that they could be forced to leave. Many of her neighbors have lived in their mobile homes for decades. Everybody has their own little space where we live. This is our home, we own it. We own the mobile home, but we don't own the land that it sits on. I just don't feel that we, can, we could and we should go rent somewhere where we own a home already. But unfortunately, the truth yeah. is that we don't own the land. More than 70% of mobile home residents own their homes, but they still have to pay rent for the lot they sit on. And when rent prices spike or the parks close, residents can't just up and move their homes because mobile homes aren't really that mobile. They can cost thousands of dollars to move them, and they might even fall apart if you try. When we bought the place, we thought it was never gonna be taken away from us. We were thinking we we're gonna be here many, many years. Grand Canyon University, or GCU, bought the Periwinkle mobile home lot six and a half years ago. But residents were not served a notice to vacate the land until April 2022. Alondra and her husband originally moved to Periwinkle to be closer to their volunteer soccer club, which serves refugee children in the neighborhood. This is my kitchen. We have a bathroom over there and we have one bedroom. But these kids, like, they're really special to us. They are for Burundi and they are refugee kids here to the United States. And they are members of our soccer club. When their parents became homeless, they were evicted. We were able to bring the kids here. We've been able to help a lot of people. Many residents in the park worry their only option will be to live in the streets. Alondra's next door neighbor, Jerry, has no idea where he will go. Good to see you. You scared me the other day. I bought this place when I was 55 years old, so it'd be the last place I have to go for the remainder of my life. So it was 28 years ago. I'm 83 years now. I'm in and out of the hospital and kind of heart problems. And my doctor said if I'm stressed, when I told him what the problem was, he said, try not to stress out over it. It doesn't matter whether I try not to or not. I wake up in the middle of the night and That's what I do in the middle of the night. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? They, they treat us like we're non-existent. Mm -hmm. Why the government don't step in and do something about this? Fight for us. I started to worry about Jerry. Because I know I had a solution. I know I have family or friends. But I don't know where Jerry would go. I started to worry about my neighbor that lives right in front of me. She's a single mom. And I started like losing sleep and staying awake at night just thinking, you know, about the families that live here. Phoenix has historically been known as one of the most affordable major metropolitan cities in the U.S. But that seems to be changing. For over two years during the pandemic, Phoenix suffered from the fastest growing home prices in the country. And even before the pandemic, 100,000 households couldn't afford their rent. But we have a lot of mobile home parks here in the city of Phoenix that is currently allowing low-income people to have affordable housing. They've been paying rent for years and years. They've paid their property tax on this for as any other homeowner. This is Pamela Bridge, a lawyer with Community Legal Services. In January 2023, the Phoenix City Council authorized a $300,000 budget for the firm to provide assistance to mobile home tenants at Periwinkle and two other parks. But they are not permitted to represent undocumented residents, who are often the most vulnerable to housing insecurity. 
But we are getting mobile home calls every single day in, at Community Legal Services from different mobile home owners and tenants who are worried, who have been getting notices. We are seeing the same situation over and over again of the increased rents or the landlord who's deciding to sell. I think a lot of out-state investors think that they can do great business in Arizona and that's what we're seeing again not just in the mobile home world but like throughout all types of property owners. In October 2021, the average rent in Phoenix reached nearly $1,500, which is triple what some residents pay in mobile home parks. Carmen Prieto is one of these residents. She lives in a mobile home park called Weldon Court in North Phoenix, where she owns a two-bedroom mobile home. She pays around $500 a month in rental fees. But Carmen and her neighbors were given an official deadline to leave. Buenos dias, buenos dias. I've been living here for 11 years at this mobile park and it's been like you see it, friendly. A lot of people don't know what to do, especially if they have six children, five children. They gotta get a, what, four bedroom, five bedroom? Can they really afford that? Trailer parks is only $500 because we own our trailers. We paid off our trailer, we bought it cash. Carmen receives around $1,100 a month through Social Security due to disability. She first moved to the park because it was the only rent she could afford. But now, she can't relocate her home. Mine's a 1973 trailer and they won't be able to move. They already said they won't be able to move. Due to federal housing regulations, mobile homes built before 1976 often aren't eligible to be moved. In fact, any mobile home built after 1976 is technically called a manufactured home. But among residents, the name didn't stick. Even if you are allowed to move your home, it can be prohibitively expensive. Arizona offers some relocation funds for mobile home residents being displaced, but it often isn't enough to cover moving costs. And to move it, it costs 7800 of their pocket that they help with the state. But it costs more to move them. And the bottom of the trailer, you move all these sidings in the bottom, and then they have uh, tires. See, this is the hitch. The hitch is already on there. I never took it off. I think if we move it, it's going to be destroyed. It'll fall apart. Carmen's daughter, Patty, says park management and city officials didn't provide information about Arizona's relocation fund in Spanish. And he never did. The Arizona Department of Housing is not legally required to inform tenants about the relocation fund. But they say they have bilingual staff available to assist tenants who contact their office. Still, Carmen says that she and her neighbors only received the original letters from their landlord in English. They see me in the streets or they come to the door. And they asked me clearly, what does it say? I had to translate it to, to them. While it isn't illegal to only provide the documents in English, it makes it much more difficult for tenants to understand their rights. Then it felt like this monster is targeting these people that don't understand what's happening because it's not in their language. I think it's our community in general that is, first of all, we're not informed of our rights. And secondly, in fear. Fear that's in the back of all these people's mind like, oh, they're just gonna call the immigration and round us all up and just shoo us to Mexico. How do we fight that? All we have is our voice. For Carmen, her trailer is a lifeline for her family. She's the guardian of her two granddaughters who she helped raise in Weldon Court. She even helped deliver her grandson in the bedroom of her home. And my little girls do consider this safe. This is where they play. They know all the neighbors. All the kids grew up together. But my little girls consider this my mom's house. So this is my mom's house and I'm gonna fight for my mom. Silvia Herrera is a community organizer in Phoenix. She and her husband, Salvador, have been helping mobile home park residents fight evictions for a decade. You can see the gentrification here, and this is all part of, of the plan to get rid of low-income communities in the core of the city. So you see Central Phoenix and these areas that have mobile home parks are totally going to be de literally demolished. Mobile home parks are purchased by investors for a variety of reasons sometimes to build apartment buildings or businesses, and sometimes just to revamp the parks and charge higher rent. In 2018, Silvia and Salvador helped residents of a nearby park connect with lawyers after they were given notice to leave. Some residents were able to negotiate to stay in the park, but they say rent spiked dramatically. Hola! Ustedes son un ejemplo de que cuando la gente lucha, entonces 
logran cosas. No importa, dice que nos suban la renta, pero el chiste es quedarnos. Aquí estamos tranquilos y la verdad es que en otros lugares se están poniendo la renta súper pesada. Sí, no, de renta, no, no, hay, no hay lugares. Esto es lo, el único lugar donde pueden rentar que... Pagábamos al principio 250 dólares de renta y ahora pagamos 750 dólares de renta más las utilidades. El otro dueño siempre tenía como las áreas verdes, venían yarderos, hacían su limpieza. Teníamos todo el tiempo servicios que ahora ya no tenemos y pagamos más dinero. Silvia y Salvador are now helping mobile home residents connect with pro bono lawyers. In many cases, the only thing these lawyers can do is buy time. They can attempt to have cases dismissed based on technicalities, like not providing adequate notice for the eviction. In Las Casitas, dozens of residents pack into a mobile home to hear updates about their case. La ciudad ya está diciendo ellos no pueden hacer nada. Entonces tenemos poquito tiempo de ponerles mucha presión y que escuchen de que ustedes han entrado todos a encontrar lugares y nadie encuentra lugares. Que escuchen de que no hay lugares. Members from all three parks have spoken numerous times at Phoenix City Council meetings to ask for help. One of their main concerns is their children. My siblings and I were raised and born here in our mobile homes. My parents, as of right now, do not have the funds to get a new place for us. Pero así como nos afecta a nosotros, les está afectando a nuestros hijos también. Y a lo mejor ellos no se expresan. Ven, hay un niño de 11 años. Estaba llore, 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 llore. Casi por dos horas mientras yo estaba platicando con el joven. Me dejó muy, muy, muy triste. If they can't find new homes by their deadline, residents of Las Casitas, Weldon Court, and Periwinkle could end up unhoused. Porque para ellos nada más son una traila. Y estos son lugares de nosotros que están al alcance de nosotros. Yo no quiero ser uno más de los que estén en la lista de los que están en la calle. Porque lo han demostrado que a la gente que está viviendo en la calle no le ponen la atención. Despite the hardships they are enduring, residents are committed to working towards a solution together as a community. Estamos unidos como hispanos, ¿me entiendes? Sí somos pobres, por eso vivimos aquí, pero pues realmente tenemos que salir adelante y no caernos, ¿me entiendes? Unidas, unidas, jamás se